We're going to... This evening we have the Monotomy Minutemen who are going to pipe and drum us a couple tunes and do the Star Spangled Banner. If you would please. Quiet. Please clear the aisle for the Minutemen. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sit down. For our invocation tonight, we have the Minister Richard Heslop from the Boston Church of Christ. Minister Heslop. Nope. Oh. You may want to use that one because they're standing in front of you. <laughs> Don't want to do that. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Richard Hislop. I'm, as uh, Saleone said, I'm, I'm a minister here with the Boston Church of Christ. I oversee a congregation here in the Arlington community. I'm very excited to be here uh, this evening uh, to lead the prayer. Uh, most of us, if we have driven down um, Pleasant Street, uh, that new church building that's under renovation, uh, that's where we'll be housing our congregation hopefully in July, August, September, somewhere around there. <laughs> Uh, we look forward to serving the Arlington community in any way that we can. I want to thank uh, uh, the, uh, the Arlington community uh, leaders for the invitation uh, this, uh, this evening to pray. Uh, I'm grateful that uh, you include the presence of God in your decisions. In the book of Proverbs, uh, the Bible personifies wisdom as someone that every leader or every person should have all keep company with. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 15, it says, By me, that is wisdom, kings reign and rulers issue decrees that are just. By me, that's wisdom, princes govern and nobles rule. Uh, your decisions and agreements uh, today will affect the, 
peace and prosperity of our community. To all the community leaders, I want to thank you uh, for what you do. And let us ask God's blessing on this annual meeting this evening. Let's pray. Uh, Father, there is uh, no authority except the ones that you have established. And uh, we are your servants. I pray that uh, those who are here will lead with integrity and wisdom and be with every member of this meeting today in their hearts and minds so that the outcome of this meeting will result in the peace, order, and prosperity to all in the Arlington, Arlington community. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Minotomy Minutemen. Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we have some very special guests with us that I'd like to introduce to you. Arlington has had a sister city uh, formal agreement with the city of Nagaoka Kyo, and this weekend we celebrated 30 years of that sister city association. <laughs> サンディネナにエアリンコンとナガオカ協は姉妹都市の上約を正式に締結いたしましてこの今年はその30周年ということでお祝いをさせていただいております。there are five members that have come from City Hall in Nagaoka Kyo. There are 40 members of what is called the Friendship Committee that have come to Arlington. For the last 10 years, we have had a student exchange program where, uh, where uh, this time of year, 25 students come from Nagaoka Kyo, and in the fall, 25 Arlington students travel over there. So first, I'd like to introduce you to the outstanding students who have come to join us they're up here in the balcony. Please welcome the students of Nagaoka I wish you could have seen their performance last night. I was going to dance with them, but there would have been injuries. あの、昨日ですね、あの、見事なダンスを披露していただきまして皆さんにも見せしたかったですけれども、私も本当は一緒に踊りたかったです。There was uh, there was a committee that put this together. Uh, there's a staff of the Board of Selectmen, there's a super
そしてこの30周年のお祝いをするにあたりまして、えー、まずはボード・オブ・セレクトマンの皆さん、えー、そして、えー、教育省の皆さん、そして教育委員会の皆様、そして、えー、アーリントン・長岡協の、えー、アーリントン側の友好協会の皆様に大変なご尽力をいただきました。So, with the mayor's delegation, they brought a translator who has been here in Arlington a number of times. They brought the chairman of their assembly. They brought the vice chairman of their assembly. And they also brought the city manager. えー、そしてですね、えー、この、えー、今回の,あの市役所からの訪問だ、まず、えー、通訳として、えー、何度も長岡京においでいただいている方、そして、えー、市議会の議長様、えー、そして、えー、市議会の、えー、事務局長様ですね、えー、そして市長様においでいただいて、また市長の方においでいただいております。And to say a few words, our very special guest of honor, who last time here five years ago, We made an honorary member of the Board of Selectmen. えそして私にとって本当にあの大切な、えー、お友達になっていただきまして5年前にこちらにおいでになった時は、えー、終身名誉セレクトマンと、えー、なっていただきました方をご紹介したいと思います。アーリントン、please welcome Mayor Yutaka Oda Sho! 長岡警視庁、小田豊様でございます。Just as I did five years ago, since the establishment of the Sister City Friendship Affiliation here in this town hall on September 21st, 1984, many citizens and students have visited between our two communities to strengthen. The ties of friendship and trust. I would like to thank you all for your hospitality, and I am heartily glad that many citizens from both communities have been able to learn more and understand each other better, which has deepened our exchange. Boston born Ralph Ward Emerson said, Do not go where the past may lead. Go instead where there is no past and leave a trail. We will make a fresh result to succeed and create a tower to the friendship and peace. Led by Mr. Richard Smith, he was a member of this town meeting and deeped to our sister city relation. I would like to close by wishing all the members of the town meet, the Board of Selectmen, other committees, commissions, happiness. And health. Thank you very, very much for bearing with my English. Thank you very much, Mayor. Mr. Moderator, sorry, of course I forgot somebody. I, I saw Senator Ken Donnelly in the back of the hall. The Senator gave them a nice tour of the State House today. Thank you very much, Ken.
Thank you. Now it's my turn. Sorry. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to the Arlington's 2014 annual town meeting. This is our 207th meeting, the first being in 1807. This is our 76th as a representative town meeting, the first in 1937. And this will be our first one where we're using electronic voting. <laughs> For procedural guidance, we follow the town of Arlington bylaws and the principles set out in town meeting time. You should all get one of those. I have provided you each with a parliamentary guide. They're on the back table by the gentleman with the camera that lay out the guides on the votes, how many votes, what procedural votes we take, and the um, quantum of vote on those procedural votes. If you'd like a copy of town meeting time, come and see me at the break. I'll explain to you how to get it. Please remember to abide by our 48-hour rule. All substitute motions or substantial amendments to any motions must be submitted in writing by placing a copy on the members' seats on the night before we expect to talk about it. So if we're going to talk about it Wednesday, they have to be in the chairs tonight. The only exception are the articles we're going to discuss tonight. Um, this year I'm going to ask a little something different. I noticed the huge piles on everybody's chairs. How about if anything that's not a motion will go on that back table? Only motions and substitute motions this year on the chairs. There's just way too much stuff on your chairs and you, you, the, the actual motions are going to get lost in all that other paper. So if we could abide by that and if you see anybody putting anything besides motions on the chairs, set them straight. They all go on the back table, so after you get your clickers, you'll go to the back table and get your stuff. I don't need a motion. <laughs> That's not in the procedural guidelines. Out of consideration to your fellow town meeting members, to allow full debate, please keep your remarks concise and brief as possible so that all members have a fair opportunity to speak. And I request that no one seek to get on the list and speak a second time till everybody's had at least one chance to speak. And please, heed the advice of Mr. Doherty, the Andover's moderator for many years, who said, I don't have a formal time limit, but I did tell the meeting that about three minutes is enough for anyone. After five, you put them to sleep. After seven, they're going to vote against you even if you agree with them. Seven minutes is our time limit. I hope we don't have, I hope we don't have to uh, vote against people or fall asleep too often. You can usually say it in five minutes or less. If you can't, you didn't practice enough. I remind the town meeting members of the email distribution list, which is for dis distributing motions, substitute motions, and the type of stuff you used to find on your chairs, but now it's going to be in the back table. Um, in advance, the list is for discussion, for debate only, and not dis no, wait. It's for distribution of materials only, not debate or discussion. It's strictly for materials. If you want to join the list, come up and see me. I have written instructions on how to do it. Last year, we appreciated the level of civility and focused, thoughtful, well-delivered debate that we had at the annual and the special town meeting. Let's keep it up this year. I wish to take at least one moment to observe, a moment of silence to observe the loss of Harry McCabe, our former moderator, Richard Smith, John Fitzmorris, as well as any and all other Arlingtons that passed away in the past year. There's just too many for me to run through right now. Okay, now on to electronic voting. Mr. Good, if you please. You've all been issued an individualized handset, an Option Finder G3. So the system is a wireless, secure radio system that works in the 2.4 gigahertz range. This is all good stuff from what they tell me. It's a calibrated, <laughs> legislator-initiated, counting by keystroke on electronic recorders. A clicker. That's what we're going to call it. We use three keys on this little device. One, yes. Two, no. Three, abstain. Present, not voting. If you're using that one, you shouldn't be here. Yes <laughs> and no. Unless you have a, a conflict of interest and you're not going to vote on it, you shouldn't be pressing three. You should be pressing yes or no. If for some reason, I mean, you 
when you came in and checked in today, we had the students back there who handed you your handsets. They should be turned on. The most reported problem with these is that someone, the user, us, has turned them off. If they do get turned off, the power button, just like on our TVs and computers, press that, it'll cycle back on, and you'll get some display like you have on your machine right now, your clicker number. You'll notice that each one of them is individually labeled with your name and your precinct and the number. So our voting administrators know who has what clicker. When you vote, they can tell what your vote is. Don't give your, do not give your handset to anyone to vote for you. If you see a member with two or more handsets, immediately bring it to my attention. This isn't funny, this is serious. If you see someone with two or more handsets, immediately bring it to my attention with a point of order. Proxy or absentee voting is not allowed by either state law or our town bylaws. You have to be present to vote. So you can't be handing these things to someone and go home. If you leave, you have to turn it in. At the end of each evening, you'll return your handsets by placing them in the bins. Eric, can you hold up a bin for me? There's one of these bins. They have this sign on them at each of the doors. All you have to do is put your handset in that bin at the end of the night. Don't take, don't not, don't take it home, because if you lose it, it's going to cost the town $75. That's what one of these things runs. And I haven't figured out how to charge you if you bring it home and lose it. But if, by the end of the meeting, I will. So don't lose it, don't bring it home, leave it in the bin. After we have a debate in the normal manner, in the normal manner, I'll confirm with the, that the system is ready by asking the voting administrator, Mr. Lynch, excuse me, Mr. Flynn, that if the system is ready, he'll tell me that it is. At that point, I'll declare that the voting is open. About Mr. Flynn, we're not allowed to talk to him. Only Eric and the other members of the voting administrative staff are allowed to talk to him because he's doing whatever it is he does and we'll screw up the whole system if we talk to him. So don't interface with him, only Eric and the other members of the voting staff. So after the voting, after he tells me to sign that the system's ready, I'll declare that voting is open. 20 seconds. We have 20 seconds to vote. Well, it's going to count down from 20 seconds. I'll reprogram this. <laughs> I'll get it fixed. It counts down for 20 seconds. In that 20 seconds, the computer pulls the room at least two and a half, three times. So your vote will not be missed. It, it talks to these things all, all day long. During that voting period, you either simply press one for yes, two for no, three for abstain. The, the abstentions are not counted as votes. The only votes that counts are the yes or no. We do not count the abstentions in any manner. The majorities are determined only on the yes and no votes. During that voting period, you can change your vote as many times as you want. So you can just keep pressing one, two, one, two, one, two. Only vote that counts is the one that's been pressed when the voting clock counts down, the system locks down, your vote is fixed, and at that point, it's going to tally our votes. And there's no provision to change your vote. So if you're randomly pressing one and two and it shuts down, you're stuck with what you get. You can't go back in and change your vote, just like on the normal votes, under the voice vote or the standing vote. So when you press one, it's going to show one. It's going to say received. So you can all press one or two or three right now. It'll say received. And then once the window's open, it will see yes received, no received, abstain received. If you press five through zero, it's going to say invalid vote. So just look at your, your handheld and make sure you got the right answer back when we vote. Did yours not do anything, Steve? That's all it's going to say right now because the system's not open. Yeah? Yeah. Your selection is broadcast to the base station. One of these things here. 
which is connected to the voting computer, which will record your vote and broadcast the confirming signal back to you. It's a complete round trip from the, your machine to this machine to their machine, back, back, back. So we all get confirmation in hand that our vote's right. If it doesn't confirm your vote, immediately stand up and get my attention with a point of order. If necessary, we have the capacity to issue a new clicker right on the spot. It takes about 20 seconds. Um, bring it to one of the staff attention. They'll get you a new clicker. We'll get it programmed into you. It won't have your name on it right away, but you'll, we'll get that fixed by the next meeting. If, we t if they can analyze what you pressed, if you say I voted no and it showed up yes, we'll give you the new clicker. They can actually somehow analyze it and figure out what you really pressed. And if it shows you pressed one and you got a no vote, then we will figure out how to change your vote. But that's extremely unlikely. When I asked the OTI, that's Option Technology Inc. is our vendor. When I asked the OTI folks if I could press one and get a no confirmation back, they looked at me like I was crazy. And they shook their heads in disbelief that I could believe that could happen. <laughs> Nevertheless, we're going to take a test vote at the beginning of each night, a quorum call. Um, I saw a bunch of people coming in a little late. We start promptly at 8. At 8 o'clock, I gavel us down, so if you can get here and be in your seat by 8 o'clock, I'd appreciate it, because at that point, we're going to do a quorum call to make sure that everybody's clicker is working, that the system is accurately checking your vote, and it's showing up accurately on the screen, and that the, your handsets are performing as required. So, we're going to give it a try right now. Um, Mr. Flynn, are we ready? Let's do a quorum call. I get my card. So, voting time is open. I declare it's open. Go ahead and vote. One, two, or three. You can see down in the corner, it's actually counting votes. Everybody look at their handset. It's going to say yes received or no received. Oh, someone's still voting. Okay, voting's closed. In most instances, <laughs> see, that's okay, it's the only time you can vote abstain. In most instances, your individual votes will not be projected on the screen. I will announce the results of the vote in the normal manner. I will announce the results in the normal manner and the tally will be displayed. Under some circumstances, either provided by our bylaws, which say that if the quantum of vote for yes and no are within six, then we're going to display the, um, the, the, you'll see the next screen, we're going to display how everybody voted. That is to kind of take the place of the old standing vote, where five people would rise if they doubted the vote. Well, we thought the six was going to take care of that, and it, we will then scroll through the names. There they are. <laughs> no, that person got elected tonight, but they um, don't have it programmed yet. So it's three screens at a time, 10 seconds a screen, by precinct. So precinct 8, Aiken hit L Ellen. Precinct 8, John Leone, yes. Find your precinct, find your name, confirm what you pressed is correct. It, we get the screens, three precincts at a time, 10 seconds a screen, it takes about two minutes. For any voice votes called by the moderator, if I stick a voice vote on something and five people 
or an electronic vote. If five members object to the vote like in the old days, five members rise for a challenge the vote, we'll run through the screens just as we did now. If it's a voice vote, we'll take an electronic vote, then we'll run through the screens. Similarly, as provided in the bylaws, if 30 members immediately rise after any vote is called, will cause the in that will also cause the individual votes to appear. The electronic tally, and then we're going to go up with the roll call. That initial electronic vote becomes the roll call, and it'll be entered into the legal minutes of the meeting. In the event of the roll call, following the electronic vote, there'll be no second vote as before. Our first initial electronic vote becomes your roll call vote, and the votes already cast are going to be projected. This is one of the big changes in our meeting that we're not going to have any second and third voting. It's all going to be, once we use electronic voting, that's going to be it. We vote once, to the screens, 30 of you arise, it becomes a roll call. Uh, Ms. Lucarelli will get a printout of that, she'll enter it into the official meeting records, and it will show as a roll call vote. So we're not going to have any more winded long roll calls. It's just reveal the screens. Another, yes, sir. Now, I'm about to get to that. <laughs> Your votes will no longer be secret unless a secret ballot has been voted for by two-third vote of town meeting prior to the vote on the article. We don't do secret ballots. I think in my whole time we've had one secret ballot, and that was, frankly, when I got elected assistant town meeting moderator because a couple people ran and we had a secret ballot so everyone could just check it off. That's in my... 20 years is town meeting, that's the only time we had a secret ballot. So we just don't do them, but I guess you could if you wanted. A record of your vote will be public. All votes will be recorded and be publicly available after the day of the meeting on the town's website. So we're gonna vote on things like that quorum call, tomorrow's website, figure by the end of the day. Give, give the, um, the IT department an, a day to figure it out, get it up on the web. You'll be able to see how everybody voted on every vote that we use the clickers on. That's the main point of this system, accountability of the representatives to, our elect, to the people that elected us. In almost all instances of no votes, of a no action vote, I anticipate using a voice vote because it's just too fast, as well as on the consent agenda vote when we initially go over the budget. We'll most likely use the clickers on zoning articles, bonding, and other votes needing a two-third or greater majority. Mr. Good, last screen please. If you have any questions or require assistance of any sort, see the e-voting team members. If you could all rise up please, including the, the students. Everybody stand up who's an e-voting staff member. See one of them, see me, or get my attention with a point of order. They're all wearing this badge. If you, see, if you have any questions, find someone with that badge and they'll help you or they'll get you a new clicker if necessary. Yes, sir. It clears automatically. When the next vote comes, um, can you scroll as if we're going to a new, new vote? So there, it clears. So we, when we open up voting for the next vote, it clears out and it's ready to go again. So it should always say received. If it says received, your, your clicker is talking to the system and you're in good hands. If anyone has a disability that makes it difficult to use the system, please let me or a member of the e-voting volunteer staff know we've made provisions to assist you in any way possible. Finally, I wish to thank, personally thank the members of the Electronic Voting Study Committee, Eric Helmuth, our dedicated chair, Adam Oster, our clerk, Wes Beal, Roly Chaffetz, Steve Storch, Elizabeth Payton, and Ray Chabonneau, as well as Alan Jones and Dave Good for their assistance throughout this project. These guys, have worked, guys and gal have worked really hard for the past two years. Uh, we had a lot of meetings and I hope we get this right. It's a learning experience for me, for you, for all of us. So if you have any questions, just see one of us and bear with me while I get it until I get the hang of it, until we all get the hang of it. And if you have any suggestions, bring them to my or Eric's or anybody else's attention and we're hoping it just goes smoothly and we can run with this. 
Um, I want to clarify two articles. In Article 16, I'm going to be stepping down as the proponents are very good friends of mine, and I have been working with them and assisting them on the article and working with Mr. Chapdelaine and Mr. Doug Heim, our new town council, on the article, so I'm going to step down on that one. And despite my own reticence on resolutions, I submitted a resolution, <laughs> Article 54. It's a resolution I hope will be an open debate to determine if we like electronic voting and if we wish to continue using the system in the future. I thought that was the most fair way for this meeting to determine if this is really something we want to continue and we like. I hope it is. I think it's going to be good for us, but it's going to give us, as a meeting, the chance to fully debate it. And that's the next a third from last. The one right after that is if you like it, give us the money to buy it or rent it or whatever Mr. Foskett decides the best way for us to procure the system is. <laughs> um, otherwise, thank you very much and good luck with us. <laughs> now, swearing in of town meeting members not previously sworn in. So all newly elected town meeting members who have not been previously sworn in, please rise. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, search your name, will participate fully and, and fairly evaluate all matters before the town meeting and vote in the best interests of the town. I support free speech and will treat others with mutual respect and will conduct myself in a civil manner that is becoming of an elected town meeting member. I do solemnly swear that I'll faithfully and partially perform the duties incumbent upon me as a town meeting member of the town of Arlington in accordance with the bylaws, the town manager act, and the general laws of the Commonwealth, so help me God. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Recognize Mr. Byrne, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is requested that the members of the Board of Selectmen and elected officials of the town, town manager, department heads of the town, and staff, superintendent of schools and staff, committees, commissions, and boards of the town, Minuteman Regional Vocational Technical School District Committee, and superintendent members of the Electronic Voting Committee and staff, members of the General Court representing Arlington, and also any consultants who have been retained to work for the town relative to articles to be acted on by this meeting, and representatives of the news media be permitted to sit within the town meeting enclosure. Uh, a second. Thank All you. in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No. To vote, I so declare. Uh, Council's return of service. Madam Clerk, do you have reason to believe that this meeting was appropriately called by the Board of Selectmen and that the Constable made return of service on the warrant in accordance with the laws? She responds in the affirmative. Mr. Byrne? It is moved that if all the business of, this, of the meeting as set forth in the warrant for the annual town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Wednesday, April 30th, 2014, at 8 p.m. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous vote, I so clear. Um, any announcements or resolutions? Mr. Warden. John Worden, Precinct 8. Mr. Moderator, uh, fellow town meeting members, um, I rise to offer a resolution uh, in memory of my predecessor, uh, Harry McCabe, a former moderator of this meeting. Um, those of you who um, have been here 25 years or more uh, will remember Mr. McCabe uh, up there. and. Um, those of you who have been here more than this year will remember Mr. McCabe over there as a town meeting member. 
Um, I first uh, met him in 1970, my first year in his fifth. And I, I soon learned in the course of that meeting that we had many common interests and, uh, and agreed on a lot of things. Um, and so we worked together on, on some projects then. Uh, uh, later uh, in that year, he asked me to become president of the Conservation Association, uh, which I did. And uh, it was my great leap into, first leap into power in the town. Uh, <laughs> that organization is uh, now uh, no longer in existence, but uh, we did some good work in the time. But uh, uh, Mr. McCabe um, was born in Boston and uh, uh, served in the, in, the, in the Marines at the, at the end of the war and in, in the Korean War, uh, went to college, uh, got married, moved to Arlington, and um, had a family. These are things that many of us have done. Um, but he did more than that. He got involved in just about everything. And uh, he, would, he became a town meeting member uh, and so on. Uh, and he, he was in so many organizations and, and uh, really devoted his whole life uh, right up until uh, last March uh, to the service uh, of this community and its people. So I'd like to offer a resolution uh, in his memory um, as follows. Uh, where, uh, whereas Harry P. Harry P. McCabe died on March 4th, 2014, and whereas Mr. McCabe was a member of this town meeting representing Precinct 21 for 48 years. And whereas Mr. McCabe was instrumental in the founding of the Arlington Council on Aging and served on that group for 48 years. And whereas Mr. McCabe was a member of the Board of Selectmen for three years and served as chairman for one year. And whereas Mr. McCabe served on the Finance Committee for five years. And whereas Mr. McCabe was a moderator of this town meeting for 12 years. And whereas Mr. McCabe served well and diligently in all these roles and, and, uh, and in many others for the benefit of the town of Arlington and its people, particularly the youth and the elderly. Therefore, be it resolved that this town meeting goes on record as mourning the death of Mr. McCabe and holding in grateful remembrance his many years of service to the town and that this resolution be spread upon the records of the meeting and a copy thereof be sent to his family. And I so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous vote of this meeting, and I so declare it. Thank you, Mr. Warden. The moderator recognizes Mr. Stephen Byrne. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. Good evening. Calling colleagues on the Board of Selectmen, Senator Donnelly, town employees, town meeting members new and old, and all Arlington residents, welcome to our annual town meeting. As you know, this, mar this weekend marked a special visit as we celebrated the 30th anniversary of our friendship with Nago Kikio. After spending the last few days with our guests, I more fully appreciate the importance of sharing our cultures and ideas. I am thankful they traveled here and for keeping this special friendship vibrant. Yesterday, we collectively dedicated a memorial bench to celebrate one of the founders of this special relation friendship, Dick Smith, in the public garden outside. I urge all to view this wonderful tribute. As we come together this evening to begin another year of town meeting, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention some of the losses our community has had since we last met. People truly dedicated to fostering the goodness of the town of Arlington. People that helped to make Arlington the respected community that it is. People like Harry McCabe, Dick Smith, Bill Armstrong, John Fitzmorris, Bob Murray, Ed Burns, and Dr. Michael Foley. These people loved Arlington and cared how others perceived our town. Arlington's greatest legacy is the people in it. We are fortunate to have so many individuals willing to serve in various capacities to make Arlington a great place to live and raise a family. As we look back over the past year, we've seen this great building's 100th anniversary. We've seen the on-time and under-budget completion of the new Thompson School, 
we have dedicated its library to Bill Shea. We've seen the town manager and staff bring life to our virtual town budget, giving transparency to the inner workings of our governmental activities. We have seen the arts flourish in Arlington and made great progress on preparing for our future with a master plan. Arlington is at a crossroads of change. We are no longer in the community that my grandfather grew up in. Yes, we still see and hold on to the influence of our greatest generation, but we also become and will continue to become a destination for new neighbors and friends. And it is our job to welcome them. Whether your family has been here for four generations or moved in last week, we welcome your ideas and hope you will join us in shaping our future. We need to work together to reach Arlington's fullest potential. With your input, we will make Arlington an even stronger and more vibrant community. After great debate, we will see the East Arlington Mass Ave Corridor project begin this year. And we are near the completion of Arlington 360 with its unprecedented conservation land agreement that ensures all of Arlington's residents will be able to enjoy the Sturman Street Woods and its beautiful Vista Parks. We have taken a serious look at Arlington's parking constraints and in the near future, we'll be making need, much needed changes that will improve the parking needs of all residents and visitors. Financially, due to the excellent work of Town Manager Chapdelaine, Deputy Manager Flanagan, and the rest of his staff, as well as our town employees who agreed to join the GIC, Arlington has been able to make the most of its last override. However, we need to ready ourselves to make important decisions on Arlington's future financial health. We need to prepare ourselves for important upcoming discussions on Minutemen, as well as the high school. Our superintendent, her staff, and all of Arlington's teachers have excelled, even in less than ideal working conditions, and the time is coming to bring our high school into the 21st century. In the last year, our community de safety departments have been quite busy. They assisted in the aftermath of the tragic Boston Marathon bombings. They helped our community cope following the horrific crime on Newland Road. They have battled against a drug epidemic by saving many residents with Narcan and arresting several of those responsible. When we are in harm's way, they are there to protect us, and we owe all of our first responders a great deal of gratitude. All of our town departments, thank you. All of our town departments work as a team. They are responsive to constituents and regularly do more with less. We are fortunate to have such dedicated and intelligent individuals in town, and I am grateful to all of them for their work. Finally, I would like to recognize the staff of the Board of Selectmen. Marie, Marianne, Fran, Jean. I can assure you that our board could not function without them and they do not get the recognition they deserve. I went with a quote from Alan McLennan who after many years of service to Arlington said, with very few exceptions, no matter how long or contentious the debate, town meeting gets it right. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Sounds like we're in good hands here. Any, um, any other announcements or resolutions at this time? Sir. Yeah. Mr. Maher. Uh, John Maher, Precinct 14. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I have the privilege of serving on the SIMS Nonprofit Program Committee which administers funds of approximately $1 million left over from the dissolution of Sims Hospital. Each year we do a request for proposal uh, for healthcare related organizations in the greater Arlington area, particularly Arlington. Uh, that uh, request for proposals are available now. They will be advertised in the Advocate this coming, not this Thursday, but the coming Thursday. Uh, and we encourage uh, anybody who will be interested in uh, getting more information to see me at the break. I also would like to indicate that to the very unfortunate passing of Dr. Foley, we do have a vacancy on the board. This is a town manager appointment. Anybody who would be interested in serving on this committee, I served 
where Charlie Lyons, a former selectman here, uh, is encouraged to make uh, to uh, submit a resume or a letter of interest to the town manager's office. Again, I'm very glad to answer any questions or provide more information. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any others? If not, that ends uh, Article 2. Article 3, reports of committees. I call for all reports of committees to be received. Mr. Byrne. At the mic, introduce yourself. Stephen Byrne, uh, Precinct 20, Town Meeting, Chairman on the Board of Selectmen. I move that the Board of Selectmen report be received. Thank you. Okay, it is so received. Thank you. Others? Oh, go ahead. You're going to do an introduction? Thank you. Um, thank you again for the microphone. Uh, Stephen Byrne, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Um, I'd also like to introduce my colleagues and department heads um, very quickly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we have Vice Chairman Joe Kiro, Selectman Dan Dunn, Selectman Diane Mahan, Selectman Kevin Greeley. We have Chief Jefferson, David Good, Michael Bolton, we have Karen Malloy, Mike Rademacher, Christine Bongiorno, Chief Ryan, who we have over there, Mr. Livergood, uh, Ruth Lewis, and Mr. Malenga. And we also have Carol Kowalski. And uh, I'd also like to introduce you to our new town council, Doug Hahn. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other reports? Mr. Foskett? Charles Foskett, uh, Precinct 8, Chairman of the Capital Planning Committee. I'd like to ask that the report of the Capital Planning Committee be received and uh, it'll be discussed under the Capital Planning article. Thank you. Mr. Sayer. Mike Kerr, Chairman of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. I move uh, that the uh, report of the Arlington Redevelopment Board be received. Mike Kerr, um, Arlington uh, Redevelopment Board Chair. Just want to introduce uh, my fellow members. Uh, Christine Sapinski is our Vice Chair. Andy West, Bruce Fitzsimmons, and Andrew Burnell is not here this evening. Uh, and of course, Carol uh, Kowalski helping us out as uh, planning director. Thank you. Thank you. Others? Introduce yours. Oh, someone's way back there. Mr. Leonard. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Leonard, Precinct 17. With just a question, if I may, will there be a report upcoming from the utility poll group this year? Um, it's a selectman's committee. Mr. Chaplin. Do you know? You, oh, Mr. Mr. Burns is going to tell us that. No, there will not be. <laughs> Could I ask why? It's a, yeah. it's a selectman committee, not a town meeting committee. So there is not a report issued. Thank you. Thank you. Any other reports of committees? Al? I move that the report of the Finance Committee be received.
Uh, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to spend a little more time than I usually do going through a couple of the numbers in general terms. Therefore, I, re I request uh, eight more minutes for a total of 15. I don't think I'll use it, uh, but I'd like to have the ability. The Chairman of the Finance Committee is requesting 15 minutes. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. You have 15 minutes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, fellow town meeting members, the Finance Committee has been working for the last three plus months uh, reviewing budgets and warrant articles and preparing recommendations before you tonight. I'd like to introduce those members uh, because I'm hoping that during the course of the town meeting you'll take advantage uh, of their uh, knowledge uh, and for questions. Uh, from Precinct 1, John Dice. Please stand. Okay, Precinct 2 is Stephen DeCourcy. Over here. Precinct 3 is Alan Tosti. Precinct 4 is Len Cart. Okay. Uh, Precinct 5 is Mary Margaret Franklin in the middle here. Precinct 6 is Carolyn White. Precinct 7 is Joseph Connors over on the side. Precinct 8 at the head table is uh, Charlie Foskett. Precinct 9 is Brian Beck. Okay. Precinct 10 is Peter Howard. Precinct 11 is Tom Cacavera. Okay, Precinct uh, 12 is Ken Simmons over on the side there. Uh, precinct 13 is Paul Bear. Precinct 14, Alan Jones, again at the head table. Uh, fit, uh, precinct 15 is Richard Fanning. Precinct 16 is William Keller. Precinct 17 is Grant Gibeon, over on the side. Precinct 18 is Mary Ronan. I don't see her today. Precinct 19 is Christine Des Desmer. Precinct 20 is De uh, Dean Carmen. And Precinct 21 is David McKenna. Now, uh, please feel free to ask them questions as they've come along. They've been putting a lot of time and effort, and I think a lot of the questions they will be able to answer for you, know, for you and for your precinct. While all of, uh, all of us have worked hard to prepare this report, we cannot claim total credit. It is the end product of many meetings which started last fall. The Capital Budget Committee has been meeting since September, reviewing and making tough decisions on the many capital needs of the town. Superintendent and school committee have done likewise with their departments and, to, and schools. Town manager preparing his budgets, meeting with department heads, uh, and uh, getting them ready for both the selectmen and the finance committee. The same has happened with the selectmen, the assessors, the treasurer collector, and the town clerk. In addition to all of this, many committee uh, meetings have taken place. Long range planning committee is meeting several times uh, to review the long-term plan and make sure it's as up-to-date and accurate as possible. Revenue Task Force has looked at the detailed numbers uh, that go into uh, many of the decisions. The Total Budget Revenue Task Force, which consists of basically all the uh, major officials of the town dealing with the budget, uh, has met several times. The Minuteman Regional Agreement Amendments that will be for you have been discussed and voted on by many. Uh, the, uh, most of this has been led by Charlie Foskett participating in many meetings over the last six months to bring these to you. All of these uh, entities went into the budgets that were turned over to the legislative branch uh, represented by the Finance Committee and then to you, the town meeting. My report of the chair is on page four of this report. Please feel free to ask questions during the meeting or afterwards. Uh, if you could please turn uh, to page C1 I'd like to review some of the numbers with you. So uh, this is your book. It's usually green, yellow, or red, and I got tired of it, so we switched to orange this year. So if you could go to C1, I'd like to review some of these numbers with you. Now this, on C1, basically gives you a summary of all the revenues and all the budgets that make this up. And I think it's important for you to understand where the revenues come from and how they're distributed. So first of all, I'd like to apologize to you by the small size of the font. Uh, it's just we had to do this to get it on one page. Uh, in the 
top right hand side you see the property tax details uh, the prior year levy limit the two and a half percent the estimates of new growth uh, the debt exclusions and uh, less the mass that's MSBA mass school building so you see the M mass school building receipts get subtracted from the debt exclusion so the net impact from all our debt excluded elementary schools each year is about 1.1 million uh, in, you see down the NWRA debt, uh, part of the water and sewer is in the property tax. Uh, it has been for many years in order to take advantage of being able to duck that in the federal income tax. Down below, next one is the school reimbursements. These are the details of reimbursements that we get from the state for each of our schools. Then you have the local receipts. These are all the miscellaneous receipts that we uh, to get throughout the town. Down the bottom, you have the local aid. Now, one of the reasons we, we wait until mid-September is because the report of the House Ways and Means Committee comes out. That's sort of the final numbers that we base our decisions on. We start off with the governor's recommendations at the end of January, uh, and then go uh, House Ways and Means is the next step. We really can't wait any further than that, but it's quite often the reason that we can't have the hard copy to you until today. We try to get you the electronic copy as soon as possible before that. Um, in the middle, you have all the appropriations, all of the budgets. These all come from the B1, et cetera, sections. Uh, and then go down through it. Down the bottom, you see something called, or not the bottom, but uh, fixed budgets, uh, things that really we can't have much change in. Uh, for example, the elections of the selectmen. That's one that goes ups and downs depending on the number of elections. Uh, each year, so uh, so the selectmen dirty don't get punished when it goes up or rewarded when it goes down. Uh, the reserve fund is also among those, um, and then you see the other budgets there. Then you have the warrant articles. As you can see, the warrant articles are really dominated by the capital budget, and Mr. Foskett will cover to you later. Uh, the Minuteman Regional School, and uh, finally down the bottom of the uh, retiree health insurance, the OPEB money that we've been putting aside for many years. And then the next column is all the enterprise funds. And then down the bottom, the summary, the revenues, uh, all the expenditures. Uh, a couple of, uh, of things I just want to point out in the expenditures. Uh, one change this year, you'll see about two thirds of the way down. Uh, Sims Urban Renewal, that's usually been about $100,000. Uh, this year is 677750 that is the debt service on the bonds that have been issued for the, uh, uh, for the Sims project. So that money has to go directly into the urban renewal and used to retire the bonds. So that will be there until the bonds are retired in 2022. After that, you know, all that money will be available for uh, general sources. Uh, the snow and ice, 500,000. What we're trying to do, both with the reserve fund and the snow and ice budget, is, is raise the money we need to pay snow and ice in the year that we spend it. Here, for example, you have 500000 That's money that we're spending this year in fiscal 14, that, but we have to raise it next year. So we've been trying to get away from that. We've been trying to raise the money we need in that particular year. And that's the, one of the reasons we keep increasing the snow and ice budget and we've re in, this year we're recommending an increase in the reserve fund to do that. So we don't have to have that 500,000 there uh, in the future. Uh, and then the final box down below is the special town meeting, uh, which are basically all transfers from various funds. So there's no money actually appropriated from the property tax there. And we'll deal with that on Wednesday. If you could go to the next page, which is actually just on the, the back of the, uh, now this is the five-year or long-term plan of the Finance Committee. Town officials spend a great deal of time on this. Uh, the numbers we're trying to project into the future. Uh, as you can see, we've been able to have zeros down the bottom. Go about three quarters down, you see balance. Zeros, that's our goal. Every year we have to have a balanced budget. Every year it's got to be zero. You can see in fiscal 2019, we have a deficit of about a little short of a million. Uh, hopefully we can cover that by the time we get to it. 
The big problem is 2020, where we have a deficit of about almost $13 million. That'll be uh, where decisions will have to be made either to substantially cut the budgets or to seek uh, an additional override from, from the citizens, residents. Now, these numbers that we project ahead, in some ways, are fairly are conservative. Uh, if the economy continues to increase at a steady pace, then the numbers are conservative, and maybe we can drop that $12 million deficit down to like seven or eight million or you know, something in that range. On the other hand, if we hit another recession, then all this conservatism goes out the wings and we have bigger deficits than we anticipated. Unfortunately, we can't control the, town, the economy, uh, both the state and national economy in this town hall, so we've got a plan for either, but just to let you know, these deficits could go up, they could come down, it just depends. It, one of the biggest things under revenues, of course, is state aid. Uh, as you can see, for this fiscal year, our state aid has increased not quite $400,000, um, that's a better number. We really should be getting five or 600,000 that we hope for. Those were the numbers we got in the 80s. Those were the numbers we got in the 90s. But we're still climbing out of a recession, again, both at the national and state level. So uh, we, we appreciate the hard work of our representatives uh, and, uh, in, on Beacon Hill. Uh, and they came through with a better number than, than the governor gave us in, uh, uh, in January. And for that, we appreciate it. Uh, before, after that, we're hoping those numbers can climb better. That'll decrease the deficit. Uh, as you can see, the override stabilization fund, this is in revenues. You see we start in fiscal 17, 18, and 19. We're drawing down that override stabilization fund that we're putting funds aside for. Uh, I, mentioned, I mentioned earlier on, um, in, I mentioned in the town, my chairman's report to you earlier in the uh, FinCom report, uh, that we're uh, giving the schools some extra funds this year because of their increases in enrollment. Uh, and so they're uh, getting their 3.5% for general education, an increase, 7% increase on their special ed, and we're giving them an additional 885000 because of increases in enrollment. That's for two years, uh, and then we've projected ahead. Uh, those will change because it depends on actual enrollment. If the enrollment goes down, then so will that number. Uh, so that's a little bit different. Uh, I think uh, we're going out of a way to help the schools with the increases in enrollment uh, and, and sacrifices uh, you know, agreed to on the part of the selectman and the town manager. I think most of the rest that you can see, uh, of course the pensions and insurance are for the steady increases uh, that we need to try to fund those, at least in the pensions. Uh, hopefully it would be funded in the 2030s. I don't know how many of us will still be here when that happens, but that's our goal. Uh, and again, most of the rest you can go through. You can talk to the, uh, uh, please do not hesitate uh, to talk to any of the FinCom members. Please don't hesitate to talk to the town manager or the deputy town manager. They've all worked with this thoroughly and can answer your questions. Uh, this, this is the heart this whole five-year five plan or long-term plan is sort of the heart of the uh, town's long-term plan to maintain the services represented in the budgets that are before you while protecting the taxpayer by delay, delaying any need for another override as far into the future as we can. I like to look at the override stabilization fund as the taxpayer protection fund. I ask for your continued support of this town meeting and again stand ready to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make the following motion. Move that the recommended votes contained in the respective reports of the Finance Committee, Board of Selectmen, Redevelopment Board, and other committees be before this meeting without further motion. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, please say yes. 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 Opposed? The motion, the motion is carried. The reports are now received and before this meeting. Mr. Costa. Move that Article B3 be laid upon the table. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Article 3 is laid upon the table. Yes, sir. <coughs> Dean Carmen, Dean Carmen, Precinct 20. Um, 
For those of us who've been here a long time, a bunch of the stuff you just did, including the last vote, might have made sense, but okay. we haven't all been here forever. Ah, so, yes. Thank you. So what we just did, as Mr. Carver points out, is we've been given all these reports with fancy covers by all the various boards. Contained in these reports, and you should have gotten most of these mailed to you by uh, the selectman's office, are the articles and a brief explanation of what it is so that would be what was in the actual warrant, which you also received. And then the bold thing that says voted. That thing that says voted is the actual vote that we're going to vote on. So as an example, take the orange FinCom report. Any money issue is going to be with the FinCom report. So they'll all be orange. I'll tell you which reports to pick up as we go along. You'll get the hang of it. So turn to page 16 as an example. Look at page 16, article 33. Appropriation for the construction of water mains and water facilities. That's the name of the article. Right underneath it was what was in the warrant, which was the warning to the citizens that we're going to talk about it. And then there's the recommended vote of the Finance Committee. When we debate an article, what we're debating is that bold voted. That's what we're going to talk about. Those words that say voted. And that article, you can move to amend that by a, an amendment to the, an amended motion, but those <laughs> you're supposed to have read this beforehand and get the amendments if they're substantial. Um, so we're going to vote about, talk about that, and that's all we're going to talk about in that article. So we're in the water and main and water facilities. We're not going to talk about sores. If you get up and talk about sores, I'm going to say you outside the scope of the article, I'm going to bang my gavel, or someone out there is going to start yelling scope, and I'm going to have to bang my gavel and gavel you down, because we don't want to talk about anything except for that. So that's a little bit of the procedure that you get if you read town meeting time, a plug for town meeting time. So what Mr. Carmen just said was, all of those recommended votes are now before the meeting. So when it comes to Article 33, Mr. Tosti's not going to get up and read that recommended vote. It's automatically in front of us. So we can eliminate and dispense with that portion of procedure. We just go right to the vote, no further talking about it. We know what we're going to talk about. Does that all make sense? The first year folks, it probably doesn't, but you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly. Any other questions of that nature? Yes. If not, yeah? Um, Only when I tell you to, and the clock says, 20 seconds. Does it say 20 seconds now? It's always that fix it. We only pressed it when it says 20 seconds, and I get the green card from Mr. Lynch. So that's the only time you're going to use the click. OK, so actually, what I want to say before is put your phones on vibrate, please. If you have to take a call, do it out the hall. Don't interrupt your neighbors and friends with phone calls during the meeting. Okay, so Article 3 is on the table. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to go to Article 4. Appointment of measure of wooden bark. That is, if someone has an issue with how much wood has been delivered, they think their cord's short, or they need to get the number of cubic yards of bark they're supposed to, they will call the measure of wooden bark in the past years. It's been Ms. Fiore, so I'd like to enter one recommended vote for Mrs. Elsie Fiore as measure of wooden bark. Any other recommendations to nominations? Seeing none, can I have one vote for Ms. Fiore, Madam Clerk? Yes. <laughs> Ms. Fiore is now our measure of wooden bark. Thank you, Mrs. Fiore. <laughs> that closes Article 4. Now Article 5, Assistant Town Moderator. Do I have any nominations for Assistant Town Moderator? Madam. Christine Deschler from Precinct 19. I nominate my colleague, Mr. James O'Connor from Precinct 19. Thank you. 
honored. Do I have any other nominations for assistant town moderator? Seeing none, I direct the clerk to enter one vote for Mr. O'Connor into the record book. That is so moved. Mr. O'Connor, congratulations. You're going to be assistant town moderator. That closes out the five pieces to Article 6, zoning by law. Medical Marijuana Treatment Center Registered Marijuana Dispensary Sightings. Mr. Kerr. Thank you. The floor is yours. Good evening. My name is Mike Kerr, and I'm the chairman of the Redevelopment Board this year. I am presenting on the zoning of medical marijuana treatment centers. I have several explanatory slides that I plan on moving through pretty quickly here. First, I want to provide a very brief history on the topic. In November 2012, there was a statewide ballot initiative to allow medical marijuana treatment centers in the Commonwealth. Massachusetts, Massachusetts voters approved and Arlington adopted by a two to one margin. Last spring, town meeting passed a moratorium on MMTCs in Arlington through the end of this year's town meeting. The notion would be to allow the town to better understand the state regs which were approved closer to the end of town meeting last year in May 2013. In January of this year, the state approved 20 applications, several of which were in Middlesex County, but none of it which was cited in Arlington. So currently, there is no proposed MMTC for Arlington. This fall is the expected release of the final regulations by the Arlington Board of Health for medical marijuana treatment centers, MMTCs, which are also called registered marijuana dispensaries. You'll see the state regs actually call them RMDs. I'm not exactly sure why. <laughs> Moving on to the next one. So why do we need to address medical marijuana treatment centers in zoning? Because zoning is the only way that we can affect where an MMTC will be placed in town. Without its specific inclusion in our zoning bylaw, MMTCs can apply for a state and local health permit with little restriction on where it may be cited. Therefore, we should want to zone this use. Given the upcoming end of the moratorium, during this past winter, a working group comprised of the town manager, the chief of police, town council, director of inspectional services, director of health and human services, director of planning and community development, and me, the chair of the ARB, discussed recommendations for zoning MMTCs. The working group proposed zoning MMTCs in B3 and B5 districts, subject to special permit with environmental design review. The ARB unanimously accepted the proposal this spring. So where are B3 and B5, which is what's been proposed here? And I apologize, the town is awfully big and the map is awfully small. Um, so B3 and B5 are what you see going along the spine of Mass Ave there. Um, B5 is the red in the center, right in the center of town. B3 consists of the three villages right along Mass Ave, in East Arlington, in the center, and in the Heights, all along the commercial spine of Mass Ave. Moving on. So why B3 and B5? First, in addition to the moratorium last year, the Redevelopment Board had also recommended allowing MMTCs in the B5 district only. That is the one that's right in the center of town. This did not pass. As we thought about zoning the MMTCs this year, we believe B5 is, only, is, is too restrictive and that B3 and B5 together will better support the intent of the law and still support our public safety goals. So B3 and B5 currently serve retail, consumer services, and office use. The B3 and the B5 districts allow for good public transit, 
and accessibility by foot traffic, which upholds the intent of the law to make treatment available to all without stigma. In addition, the visibility on the main co commercial spine of Mass Ave also supports the law enforcement goals with respect to citing MMTCs. The second part of the proposal is that MMTCs be subject to special permit subject to EDR. The environmental design review part of the recommended vote allows for the town to protect the public interest for a specific location proposed by an applicant. This includes a public hearing by the redevelopment board to go through the 12 areas of the environmental design review. Those areas that the rede redevelopment board considers are preservation of landscape, relation, relation of building to environment, open space, circulation, surface water drainage, utility service, advertising features or signage, special features, safety, heritage, microclimate, sustainable building, and site design. Each time someone comes before the redevelopment board for an EDR, uh, for a special permit subject to EDR, the board goes through all of these through its public hearing process. And that's what an MMTC would be uh, subject to if we pass the zoning as, as proposed. So other considerations. The sequence of permitting is expected to be done concurrently with the applicant moving on its state permit, its special permit subject to EDR, and its local public health permit at the same time. It should be noted that the state regulations provide that, here they talk, call it an RMD, shall not be cited within a radius of 500 feet of a school, daycare center, or any facility in which children commonly congregate. This 500-foot buffer, edge of building to edge of building, will be part of the review as well. It doesn't go into any more detail on that, just to be clear. But we do, thank you, but we do get the benefit of that in passing this zoning bylaw. So in conclusion, medical marijuana treatment centers are the law. Arlington has overwhelmingly approved them. The Redevelopment Board believes it has taken a prudent course in balancing the interests of the law to make treatment accessible and available without stigma with the need to support the town's public safety concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ruderman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Michael Ruderman, Precinct 9. I take particular interest in this article because uh, uh, B5 is uh, my street, my neighborhood, my home uh, on Alton Street, and that's all that was proposed last year. Uh, today, uh, the, the article before us expands what is suggested in the uh, proposed vote to Business 3 and Business 5 as these areas that, that the town would seek to qualify as, as a uh, permissible areas for dispensaries. I'd like to ask concisely, because I do not wish to yield my time to, to a long answer, uh, why not, if our purposes are to avoid stigma, to, to ensure access, to normalize as, as much as possible uh, the uh, sale and procurement of, of this legal substance, why not all of our business areas, why not all of them should be uh, qualified as acceptable for, for such a dispensary, Mr. Moderator? I'd like to ask that question. Okay. Right. The working group went through in detail all of the different business districts, and including the industrial district as well. Uh, I have some other maps that we could go through the different uh, areas, but for different reasons. Um, including accessibility and the ability for people to get there with public transit, as well as law enforcement's desire to be able to um, uh, monitor uh, these particular sites. Uh, it made the most sense uh, for it to be uh, on the commercial spine in the opinion of both the working group and the redevelopment board. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, members of town meeting, that's a non-answer. Uh, it made the most sense, we felt, we thought. Um, it's our idea, trust us. 
Uh, I would trust that idea a whole lot more if in that, in that lineup of one of the earlier slides that you saw, uh, the working group that was uh, pulled together to consider this, the town manager, the chief of police, the town council, health and human services, redevelopment board. Did you see what was missing? Yes, town meeting usually gets it right. Uh, citizens, was anyone from the neighborhoods asked about this? Any of the uh, uh, business owners from these areas? Uh, anyone whose backyard this is going to be in because it will be in people's backyards. This is one of the uh, s uh, signal facets of Arlington zoning. We have very, very few areas that could possibly qualify as a buffer. Everybody's next to something else. Everybody is within a few hundred feet of some other use. These business areas aligned along the commercial spine also back up to all of our principal uh, places of schooling, of worship, of, of education, uh, in, in, in the broad sense of uh, you know, you know, gyms and studios and, and uh, 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 all sorts of clinics. And, uh, I asked at the hearing in which these are taken up, all right, what does this buffer zone really mean? 500 feet of a, within a place uh, in which children commonly congregate. What does that mean? It's a rather simple exercise in the, in the, in the very effective uh, graphic, uh, uh, geographic information system, GIS uh, software that the town has to, to identify a location, draw an arc around that, and come up with a number of addresses by, by you know, street and number. This qualifies, this does not. This is within range, this is not. Couldn't get that. Why? We don't want to be, we don't want to be too limiting the chairman of the ARB said. We don't want to be too limiting. We want to, we want to approach this in a fuzzy kind of amorphous, uh, we'll decide on what's within the buffer zone when it comes in front of us. This doesn't give me much confidence. What would give me more confidence is that if we made this, um, this use of, of our town resources available wherever business is conducted in town. Certainly that would destigmatize it. Certainly that would give, give the police the most opportunity to, to take notice. We're not tucking it away in the corner of an industrial area, but any place where, where legitimate business is conducted, why not have a legitimate business conducted in that place? I would prefer to see, to see all of the business areas in town opened up to this use, if any of them are going to be, rather than to group these areas, like I said, along the, along the, the, the commercial uh, and social spine of the town where all of the conflicts and congestures and, and uh, concurrences of the buffered uses and the non-buffered uses are all going to come together. I think we would have fewer conflicts and a greater amount of acceptance if instead of the recommended vote, you voted no and therefore and thereby made all of the business areas in town available to this legitimate use. Thank you. Mr. Uh, what would happen if we voted no? Would the entire town be open for this? Yes. I just want a point of clarification. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, good evening. Uh, at this point, name, name, position. Doug Heim, Town Council. I think at this point in time, uh, it would depend a little bit on how the state received a uh, vote of no. Um, I think the most likely outcome is that by not specifically zoning it, as Mr. Kerr suggested, there'd be at least the suggestion that it could be zoned anywhere. Um, but what we really cannot do, uh, it's very clear in the law, is we cannot basically put this over for a further moratorium or in any way, shape, or form zone it out of Arlington. Does that satisfy you, John? So they could put it anywhere in town if they came in? It's a possibility. There hasn't been a specific uh, case addressing that matter to date. Thank you. Mr. Um, O'Brien, Uh, Andy O'Brien, Precinct 16. Um, I know that it's required by state law that, that we try to zone this, but 
we also should be we've also been asked to uh, make more cemetery space available. And um, I think in all our wisdom, we've said no to conservation land. Um, you know, in my 20s and my 30s, I lived in Alston. I lived in Central Square in Cambridge. And when I got a little older, I got a little tired of the noise. And I know that many folks will tell me that, OK, some young person that's coming to buy their pot, you know, they're not going to make nearly as much noise as some you know, raucous inebriated, drunk college student. But if we see the example of Colorado and California, the number of people, and I would say predominantly young, will you know, get, get some kind of provision, you know, suffering from headaches or whatever, to get their medicinal marijuana. And I say this as someone when I bro that's has a, had a broken leg and was uh, prescribed every known painkiller and uh, it was none of them worked I threw them all up and I know that someday if I have to go through some kind of pain procedure again I'll you know medical marijuana will probably be the choice but I, I feel confident that if I really need it I'll probably be able to get it but I kinda like living in, you know I kinda like living in a town I'd like to live in a town that maybe we're you know we are free of this so you know, I say a vote, no vote will be a vote that will um, maybe just kind of send a message that you know we don't want the state telling us what to do, and you know if you're going to do it, you know bring it on, bring it in your way. Thank you, Mr. Koch. Oh, you want to take a break now? All right, let's break for ten minutes, Mr. Koch. You're first in line.